Hello pregnant ladies and pregnant people supporters and people who just like to learn about pregnant people. My name is Derek and I'm a doula and today I came to open the discussion about things that you shouldn't and should do during pregnancy. So as a doula, I've seen many different pregnancies and many different births. Everyone has a different experience. However, these 10 do's and don'ts for me are something that I think every pregnant woman should and shouldn't do. So I'm gonna give you five do's and five don'ts. Things that you should gravitate towards and things that you should stay away from to help ensure a positive pregnancy for mom and baby. So let's get right into it. All right, so I'm gonna start with the do's. And for my first do, it would be to find a care provider that you like and trust. Now this is extremely important because the last thing you want is to be in your birth setting, giving birth, and the person who is delivering your baby is not someone that you feel comfortable with. birth, you need to be comfortable and you need to feel good around everyone that you're around. And so if you don't like your provider, it can be detrimental to your birth experience. So some tips for finding a provider that you like and trust would be to first find someone who aligns with your birth preferences. So if you intend on having a home birth, you need to find a home birth midwife. If you intend on having a hospital birth, you need to find an OBGYN. If you intend on giving birth in a birth center, find a provider that gives birth in that birth center. I would definitely suggest interviewing your care providers because they work for you at the end of the day. So ask them questions that will make you feel more comfortable in your birth setting. Ask them questions such as, do you provide evidence-based care? How do you feel about doulas? Even if you don't have a doula, I suggest asking this question because a care provider who is totally against doulas is most likely a red flag. A care provider who supports a doula's presence and encourages you to have a doula is a green flag. Find out their birth philosophy as well. If they think that every baby should be born by C-section, that may not be the right care provider for you. Or if you plan on having a C-section, maybe that is the right care provider for you. So find someone that you like and trust and that you feel comfortable around. And sometimes it takes going through a few providers to find that person. However, do your research because at the end of the day, you want to feel comfortable around them. And for my first don't, I have don't skip a childbirth education course. So even if you have a good provider, you still need to take a childbirth education course because they provide you with information that you may not know or may not think that you need. And they give a lot of insight. So same thing as with the provider, find a childbirth education course that aligns with your birth preferences. There are many out there. There are many childbirth educators out there. So do a little bit of research and take a course. It could be a small course, like a small weekend course. It could be a six week course. Do whatever is right for you. But I would definitely suggest don't skip your childbirth education course. For my next do, I would say eat nutritious foods and stay hydrated. Now, as a pregnant woman, I know it can be difficult to even eat when you're dealing with nausea, fatigue, growing a full human inside of you can be extremely difficult. So it can be hard to focus on what you're eating every second of the day. However, proper nutrition helps your baby grow and helps keep you healthy and have a better childbirth experience. And you wanna make sure that you're getting all the nutrients and vitamins that you need. For instance, vitamin C is important for helping build your baby's amniotic sac. So you wanna make sure that you're getting enough vitamin C. A good way to make sure that you're eating nutrition foods are to do things such as meal prepping um, and having people bring you food so if your best friend or your mom can help bring you a meal a week or something like that that can be very helpful but just stay on your nutrition and also stay hydrated many pregnant women are not as hydrated as they should be so a great pregnancy tip is to Every time you feel as if you need to put something in your mouth, hey, yo. drink a glass of water first. This ensures that you're getting proper hydration and can help you stay away from eating things that you don't need to eat. Which brings me to my next don't, which is don't eat unsafe 
and unhealthy foods and do not overindulge. Moderation is key when it comes to any lifestyle. So you wanna make sure that even if you're having pregnancy cravings, that you have them in moderation if they aren't healthy for you and try to switch out some unhealthy snacks for some healthy snacks. Um, it can take a while to get in a routine of eating more healthy, but in the long run, it's gonna benefit you and your baby much, much more. Do surround yourself with positive and supportive people. So growing a whole human inside of you takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time and commitment. You want people around you who are going to support you, who are going to do things for you that are going to help make your life easier, not more difficult. So you essentially want to build a birth team. And a birth team consists of basically people who are going to support you. Definitely give your support people roles and things that they can do to make your life a little bit easier and i suggest if you don't have the money to hire a doula or you don't or you can't find a doula that's right for you have one of your close friends or your partner take a doula training they don't have to become a certified doula they don't have to serve anyone else they can take that training so that they can help you a little bit more throughout your process and so for my next don't, don't surround yourself with negative or unsupportive people. Anyone around you that you're getting negative vibes from, you need to cut them off. I don't care if it's your mom, your stepmom, your cousin, your sister. If they don't support you, they don't need to be around you. Stress and childbirth do not go together well. So if someone is stressing you out and causing stress to your mind, that goes into your body and goes directly to your baby. And babies can feel what their moms feel. They can sense what's going on. So you don't need that around you. So if your mom comes into your house and every time she's there, she's like, why are you having this home birth? What do you need a midwife for? They have hospitals all over town. Won't you feel safer at the hospital? Won't you feel safer with nurses? Blah, 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 blah. Or if your cousin comes around all the time and all she wants to do is talk about people and what such and such was wearing and what was going on in the shade room. Maybe you need to distance yourself from them for a little bit. Maybe you need to talk to them less because negativity has no place in the childbirth setting. So be careful who you spend your time around and who you spend your energy with because it's not just you, it's your baby and your family. Setting these boundaries can be extremely difficult. However, I'm here to tell you that if you don't set them now, it will be even harder to set them later. So do what you gotta do, cut off who you gotta cut off, and just make sure that people respect you. Then when people respect you, they won't have a problem with you setting boundaries. But if they do have a problem with you setting boundaries, then it just is what it is. Sometimes people need consequences for their actions and it's not up to you how they respond to something that you're doing for yourself. Now check that. Um. So, yeah. Next on my pregnancy to-do list would be to prepare mentally, physically, and emotionally for the childbirth and postpartum experience. So birth can be compared to a marathon. You wouldn't go run a 10K without doing any previous exercise, so you shouldn't do that when it comes to childbirth. You can be in labor for hours to days, so it's very important that you prepare your body for that intense exercise. Exercising, throughout the week and getting your body moving helps a lot when it comes to childbirth because your body has already been through these different labor positions, these different stretches, these different walks that you need to do to help get the baby out. Your body has already felt those things, so it makes it a little bit easier when you're doing the childbirth experience. To prepare mentally and emotionally, you want to do exercises such as breathing exercises, visualizations, journaling. These help you to calm your body, calm your mind, pay more attention into your senses so that when you are in childbirth you can do that again and take your mind away from the pain or the stress that comes with childbirth 
Journaling can help to bring up a lot of the emotions that you are feeling because as we know, there are a lot of hormones that come out to play during pregnancy and you have emotions that are all over the place. So journaling can help to kind of acknowledge these emotions and learn how to deal with them because once you have that baby, emotions get even crazier. And so being able to acknowledge your feelings and emotions and express them in different ways can be very helpful to your child birth and pregnancy journey. Doing these things also help you make informed decisions because when you have clarity in your mind, clarity in your heart, clarity in your soul, you feel better about yourself and you do the things that you need to do, such as the research that is important for the type of birth that you want to have and having that information helps you make informed decisions. Now, something that you should not do during pregnancy is make fear-based decisions. Fear-based decisions are exactly that, decisions that are based off of fear. So if you get an epidural because you're scared that you won't be able to handle the pain throughout the rest of your labor, or you get any type of intervention out of fear, or you do something out of fear, it's not the healthiest thing for you to do. You want to make decisions that are right for you and that are made off of information and clarity versus fear. You also want to make decisions based off of your intuition. So this is something else that you should do is follow your intuition. As a pregnant woman, your intuition is hiding. And if you're doing the four other things on my pregnancy to-do list, then you should have much less of a problem finding your intuition and listening to it. It's important to follow your intuition as a mom because this can be life or death for some people. I watched a video of a woman who was eight months pregnant and she just didn't feel right. Her baby wasn't moving as much as usual and she had a doctor's appointment in the morning. However, she said, I'm going to go into the hospital tonight just to be sure that everything's okay. And when she got there, they told her that the umbilical cord was wrapped around the baby's neck. She had to have an emergency C-section at eight months and they told her if she hadn't come in, her baby might not have made it to the morning. So that intuition is very important. And the healthier you are, the louder it speaks to you. So make sure that you follow your intuition. Now for my last don't, it would be to not rely on Google for all of your answers. So you have a care provider for a reason, you need to discuss certain things with them. Or you need to find evidence-based research on the things that you are looking into. You don't want to do research and click on the first page of Google and say, hey, this is all the information I need. You need to use all of your resources. So although Google is a good resource, make sure that you are reading books, make sure that you are talking to your provider about the things that concern you, and make sure that you are talking to care prof professionals and people who can give you a little more insight because Google cannot give you all the inf information. So use it for research, however, don't use it for all of your confirmation. Okay, so let's review my pregnancy to-do list one last time before we go. Make sure that you find a provider that you like and trust. Make sure that you eat well and stay hydrated. Make sure you surround yourself with supportive and positive people. Prepare yourself mentally, physically, and emotionally for childbirth and make informed decisions. And last but not least, trust your intuition. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you're pregnant, try to do all my things on the to-do list and give yourself grace. And if you're not pregnant, please send this to your nearest and dearest pregnant lady and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.